Hi. Now in this video what I want to do is introduce you to something called the modulus and the argument of a complex number z. And what I've got here is a general complex number z equals a plus bi drawn on an argon diagram. So what do we mean first of all by the modulus of the complex number z? Well it refers to the length of the line here. And to do that, to work out that length, we have to think of a right angle triangle drawn where this length up here is B and this length across here is A. So when it comes to the modulus of Z, by using Pythagoras' theorem, we know that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two shorter sides and to get that length we would then have to square root it. So it'll be the square root then of a squared plus b squared. Now there's various other notation that you can get for something like this. Very common one is to see this written. Okay, z with two straight lines down the side. Often referred to as the mod of z for short. And that too is going to obviously be equal to the square root then of a squared plus b squared. You're going to find that you get this written sometimes, the modulus then of a plus bi. When you get that, it's the same thing, the square root then of a squared plus b squared. Some authors just simply write mod z. Mod z then will be the root of a squared plus b squared and so on. Another form that you can get is that the length of this can often be denoted by say r. And if that's the case then r is equal to the root of a squared plus b squared. So quite a few different ways of writing down the same concept. Okay, so what do we mean by the argument of Z? Well, the argument of Z is an angle. It's an angle theta. And on this diagram, it's the angle made between the positive real axis and the complex number. So it would be this angle round here. But we've got to be careful with theta. It's normally measured in radians and it's an angle that goes between minus pi and it's less than or equal to pi radians. In degrees that's obviously greater than minus 180 degrees but less than or equal to 180 degrees. But we tend to work in radians. And for short some people call this arg z. So you can be seeing this quite often, arg z equals this angle theta. Now you've got to be careful because of this angle lying with between these restrictions here. Because when you get complex numbers drawn, they can be in various quadrants. The first quadrant, second, third and fourth quadrant. And so you can see that I've marked on in each of these diagrams the arg of z, the angle theta. But because it's got to lie between minus pi and pi here, when it becomes goes into this third quadrant or the fourth quadrant, we've got to turn in the negative sense. All right? So theta will be negative. In these two, it's always positive. Now, how do we work out what this angle is? We well, can be very careful with this type of uh, question because what I would encourage you to do is always select the acute angle in any diagram. For this one, this is easy because the acute angle here is theta itself, but I'm going to call it alpha. In this one, the acute angle here would be this one here. This would be my alpha. And in this one, this would be alpha. 
and in this one this would be alpha and when you're finding the arg of a complex number set always draw a sketch otherwise you're going to get caught out or likely to be caught out anyway as you'll see later on in the examples that I do and how do we work out this acute angle alpha well again we look back at the triangle that we can draw the right angle triangle in each of these we'll have a right angle triangle looking something like this okay to get alpha what we do is we look at what tan alpha equals tan alpha will always equal the opposite side over the adjacent side opposite over adjacent opposite over adjacent and so on okay but the lengths of these sides we take as the positive value of the a and the b that we've got for the complex number in other words we take the mod of b over the mod of a I know I'm using the word mod again very similar to what we had here but it's in the context of taking the length of these sides so it follows that alpha will be equal to the inverse tan then or arctan of the magnitude of B over the magnitude of A and once you've got the alpha for instance you can work out what this theta is by just doing pi radians minus alpha and you should be able to get the various values of theta here now as I say you've got to take care over these ones but I've got an exercise here coming up I've given you four questions that you can try and uh, have a go just pause the video and come back when ready and I'll work through the solutions okay well let's see how you got on if you had a go well the first one is fairly straightforward because it's in the first quadrant we haven't got to worry about positives and negatives so much so when it comes to working out the mod of Z1 all we think need to do is think of our triangle through here okay this length up here will be four units this will be three units so when it comes to working out then the mod of Z1 all we've got to do is use Pythagoras' theorem and it's going to be the square root then of 3 squared plus 4 squared in fact it's a well-known triangle you should know that that's going to be the square root of 25 which is 5 we often refer to it as the 3 4 5 triangle now when it comes to working out the arg of Z1 that'll be this angle here let's call it theta now because it's already an acute angle I could actually go straight into this one and say that theta is equal to the inverse tan of 4 over 3 opposite over adjacent and remember we give this in radians unless we're told otherwise and if you put your calculator in radians mode and do this you'll end up with 0.927 and so on radians so when it comes to the arg of the complex number Z1 we can say that therefore arg of Z1 equals 0.9 radians say to one decimal place okay so there's the first one now I want to turn our attention in fact to say this one down here rather than going to this one because you can see I've used the same numbers here essentially as I've used up here and I'll show you why it's important to work out acute angles in a moment but when it comes to working out the mod of Z4 the mod of Z4 is going to be essentially exactly the same as what we had up here we we'll draw our triangle in say okay let's just put that in and we've got our lengths as being four units downwards and three units to the left so 
when we work out the mod of z4 we got our triangle again just like we had up here it's going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared now you could write minus 3 as long as you write minus 3 in a bracket all squared plus negative 4 all squared same thing though okay I tend to take off my minus signs when I'm dealing with negative values I'm only concerned with the lengths of the sides of the triangle anyway we know that this one comes to 5 the root of 25 being 5 but when it comes to working out arg of z4 then we need to be thinking about working out this angle round here which is going to be a negative term let's call it theta then but we need to work out what this angle in here is this acute angle is which I'll call alpha so when we work out alpha we know that alpha is the inverse tan or arc tan then of the 4 over 3 and we know that that comes to because we worked it out up here 0 0.927 and so on radians so when it comes to working out what the arg of z is we therefore have arg of z4 well that's going to be equal to a minus angle and it's going to be pi minus the 0 0.927 and so on radians now because I'm running out of room I'm going to round this up what you get is minus 2.2 radians to one decimal place so you've got to take care over these because it's so easy just to say that the arg is equal to the inverse tan of the imaginary number over the real number and if you did that you'd have minus 4 over minus 3 which would give you exactly the same result as this but it's not really minus 4 over minus 3 as you can see it turns out to be the minus 2.2 radians okay well let's see how you got on with say this one over here same way we would draw ourselves a triangle round here and our lengths would go in as 12 units up 5 units to the left when it comes to the mod of z2 this is a familiar triangle if we're using Pythagoras theorem this is what we call a 5 12 13 triangle but if I was working it out and didn't know that then I could either write minus 5 squared plus 12 squared but I'm going to strip off that minus because I'm only concerned with length so it's 5 squared plus 12 squared the square root of 169 which is 13 and when it comes to working out what arg of z2 is we're looking at this angle round here which is going to be a positive angle but to get it I would look at this acute angle in here alpha work that out alpha equals the inverse tan of 12 over 5 remember to be in radians mode and if you work that out on your calculator you'll find you get 1.176 and so on radians so when it comes to working out what theta is the arg of z2 then we've just got to say arg of z2 equals pi radians minus alpha pi minus then 1.176 and so on and if you work that out and round it up you'll find that you get 2.0 radians okay to one decimal place and similarly I've got a, another complex number here same values basically the 5 and the minus 12 if we draw our triangle in here again like so we can see that this length is 5 units this length is 12 units when it comes to working out the mod of z3 again it's going to be 13 because we're going to be doing the square root then of 5 squared 
plus as I say you could use minus 12 in brackets or squared or just simply 12 squared it's our 5 12 13 triangle so the mod of Z3 is going to be 13 and when it comes to working out the arg of Z3 we're looking at this turn in here theta I'm going to work out the acute angle in here though okay first of all I'm going to call it alpha so we know that alpha will be equal to the inverse tan of 12 over 5 opposite over adjacent work that out we're doing exactly the same sum as we did here turns out to be 1.176 and so on radians so when it comes to working out the arg of Z3 then all we need to do is just put a minus on the front of this angle here so it's going to be minus alpha or minus 1.2 radians if we round it up to one decimal place 1 dp alright so I hope that's given you an idea then on how you go about working out the modulus and argument of complex numbers always draw a sketch though just so that you can appreciate which quadrant it's in and hopefully not make any careless mistakes alright